Ron Ministry for another message that I'm sure you're going to enjoy. You're going to enjoy. Um, before I go into this message, I want to get a, a special uh, prayer to my sister, my older sister, my big sister. She has uh, cancer and is on the uh, uh, four. It's on a level four, so she is in good spirit right now. And we we always talk and um, we talk about spirituality. And I'm, I'm sure this is why she has a good spirit. She's her, she's upbeat, and this is not making her feel like uh, she's afraid of this cancer and uh, things like that. So I want to give a shout out to my sister, Kathleen Woods, uh, just keeping you uh, in, 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 in prayer that you understand your journey. And from what I know, your journey has been excellent. So with that being said, um, just want to make that acknowledgement. But the message today is about Actually, it's the title is Spirituality is the truth that set us free. It's the truth that set us free. Ah, do you smell that? Freedom. Ah, bring it, bring it all in, brothers and sisters. Kings, queens, and God, bring it all in. Don't you smell it? Ah, oh, it's so beautiful. To have that freedom, and, that, and 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 you know, at John eight thirty two, it says, "Then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free, set you free, brothers and sisters." With that being said, let's approach the divine source, divine energy, and have Him infuse Himself inside of you, inside of me. To open up our eyes to our spirituality, to reach the consciousness of Christ. So let's go and pray. Divine Father, divine source of energy, we come to you at this time to ask you to guide this message. Guide this message. Open up the eyes of the spiritual ones, the ears so they may hear, and eyes they may see. Then you spoke of the new scrolls, new understanding of your word, and let this light shine in them as you shine in me as your messenger. I'd like to leave this, this meeting, this message in your care and in your keeping. Amen. Amen, amen. All right. The truth should set you free. You know, the truth. What is the truth? Well, definition truth is this. That which is true or in accordance with fact or reality. Let me say that again. Truth. That which is true or in accordance with the fact or reality. And it says, tell me the truth is an example. Tell me the truth. And what is accordance? Because it says in accordance with facts. So accordance goes out to say the accordance definition is in a way that agrees with or follows something such as rule or request. In accordance with the request, I'm sending a copy of my book. All right, so it's in a way that agrees with the following something such as a rule of request, accordance. Then the definition uh, that we will examine a, a third time is the actual, something that has a, a, a fact. We're going to talk about a fact because truth, fact, set you free. Fact, something that has a actual existence. So we're talking about the truth backed up by factual existence. Amen, amen. So, you know, when we think about the 
three components of man. The three components of man, uh, we cannot forget the three components of man, what makes up the man. And this I like to repeat because it's always good to be reminded. Okay? So first, we have to understand man and woman and child and person are made up of three components. And that's three components is the natural body and the spiritual body and there is that soul. You see, those are the three elements that make a man. But in the right order, spiritual, soul, and the body, the flesh. Now, at 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter, verse 44, notice what it says. It says, it is sown a natural body, but it is raised a spiritual body. Is there is a nat if there is a natural body, there is also a spiritual body. All right. So if there's a natural body, then there's a spiritual body. Vitally important that we understand it's a spiritual body. That's the spiritual body that people neglect a lot of times. We think about ourselves, the ego, the soul. And we lose sight of the spiritual body and how important it is to us, to you, and to everyone who are walking in the light and the spiritual walk that you've been invited to, to the house of our ministry. So with that being said, we're going to talk about, you know, Christ. Christ walked not by soul. He always recognized his spiritual body, the true self. See, Christ came into this world. He had the flesh. He had the body. He had soul. And he had the spiritual body. But that is the flow that he walked in if we paid attention to the story of Christ's journey. See, he had a journey himself. But I like to also highlight Galatians, the fifth chapter, verse 16. And it reads, So I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. Remember the soul, the ego plays the negativity, energy, and not the positive. So, you know, we can walk by the Spirit. And at the same time, when we walk by the Spirit, you become into that, that, that zone of perfection. You know, it says you can be perfect. The Word says you can be perfect like your Father. So when we get into that zone and we walk in that Spirit, we don't want to take it for granted. We don't want to. We don't want to let that ego, that soul, entice us into a way of negative connotation of doing things. So the Galatians talk about this freedom, this spirit, and that we want to stay within the boundaries. So once we raise our spiritual consciousness above the soul ego, then we will be in line with Hebrews 4.12. What does Hebrews 4.12 say? For the word of God is alive and active, sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates even, now listen up, penetrate even to the dividing soul and spirit. Now why would the scriptures tell us that the word of the Most High, the divine, sharper than any two-edged sword, but he can split that soul and he can split that spirit. That's sharp. So you have to separate the soul, the ego, and the spirit. Vitally important of the message of Christ's walk and journey. Okay? Amen, amen. So, again, we will 
we are, we are free. We are free from what? What is our freedom? Our freedom is from the fleshly self. And we no longer walk in, in the flesh or the ego. And with that being said, you will be ye perfect. Amen, amen. We will be perfect. And this is the goal. Uh, again, sanctification. Sanctification and renewing of our mind. Yes. Amen, amen. All right. So as we talked about Hebrews and their shopping at so in separating their soul and their spirit. Oh, we're on our way to the greatest journey of freedom. Ah, can you smell it? Can you smell it? So here's the point. Then you are un, you are no longer under the authority of religion. We have just elevated our higher consciousness. We are not moving. I mean, we are moving upward and we are going to become stagnated if we stay in the lower understanding of religion. Religion has its part but now it's not as relevant, relevant as it is now because we're talking about a higher consciousness. Uh, we, we have to understand. We have to move on because sometimes we can stay in one place too long where we get places. Uh, 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 we don't care to learn anything newer. Or if we learn something newer, we can't accept it because we stuck on a way and that we always want to walk. We get comfortable, you see. So the House of Rod ministry is that spiritual place for those who want to elevate their higher consciousness, their spiritual consciousness, state of mind. That's the house of law. So the spiritual body cannot, I have to explain, the spiritual body is not a race. Because when you leave your body and you come into the spiritual body, it's part of the journey. When we exit this world, we come into it as spiritual body. 24-7. See, right now we're in the flesh, we're in the body, but when that spiritual body comes out, there's no race, no color, no ethnic, no, it has no, it, it, it's, it's, we all the same, brothers and sisters, king, queen of God, we all are the same. So once we recognize the spiritual body inside of the flesh, we are the same. There's no reason for us feeling better than someone or judging someone or we all the same once we leave this fleshly vehicle. So when I say when I say be free and, and the spiritual body is free, it, it, it brings us to the point where you know the spiritual body is is no longer no longer strain, constrained to boundaries, you see. We, we can move beyond boundaries because we are free. The free spiritual being. Know thy truth. Thy truth will set you free. And, you know, and when we think about us walking in the flesh, walking in the body, and I was saying, when we, you know, here's an example. Is uh, uh, when I was in Georgia, an older woman, she was a Caucasian woman, and we was on the same vibe and the same frequency. And uh, she had a store, and I was visiting her store, and we were talking about racial harmony. And it came to the point where we talked about uh, black, whites. And, and, and things of that nature. And she said to me, she said, if I had a brown egg and a white egg, and if I cracked it, what color is the yolk? We all the same. All the same, brothers and sisters. And imagine that the yolk is the spirit of each and every one of us. Each and every one of us. Can you imagine? There's no race. There's no ethnicity. Ethnicity or any of that when you come out of your body from your journey when you exit your body. 
So the freedom, this is it's, it's, it's to the point where we no longer, like I said, we judge no one. We're, we're, we're coming to be a nation of spiritual beings with Christ consciousness. Can you imagine harmony when we come to realize there's no need for partiality. There's no need for racial uh, 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 wars and, and, and things of that nature. We don't need that. Not when we're free. You see, we have to be free. We are free to participate in all kinds of customs or any uh, custom that deals with different belief systems. You know what I'm saying? You know, you can celebrate Halloween. Some religions tell you you can't celebrate Halloween, you can't celebrate Easter, you can't celebrate Christmas, you can't do this and you can't celebrate. When you're free, truth set you free. Gotta smell that freedom. Because we don't worry about that. And you know, here's what Colossians, Colossians, the second, second book, verse 16, had this to say. Therefore do not let anyone judge you but what you by what you eat, drink, or with regards to religious festivals. God's a religious festival. festival. Don't let nobody judge you. You're free. Don't let nobody judge you. It says it right here. Religious festival. You know the most high, the divine father want us to enjoy life without the yoke of these, 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 these rules like the Pharisees put on the people doing of Christ's uh, a journey. He says, you bind people up with all these rules and regulations and you don't follow those same rules yourself. He put all the pressure. So here again, we don't have that pressure. We don't have to be judged because of religious festivals or what we drink or what we eat because we're free. Spiritual being. In the oneness Amen, amen. So, and then verse 17, I want to go with verse 17. It said, there, the, these are a shadow of things that were to come. The reality, however, is founded in Christ. Founded in Christ, that journey he took, the story about his journey resonates into us today. That spiritual body, I, I can't say the spiritual body enough because we're not a religion, brothers and sisters. The house of law is not a religion. It's about spirituality there. That's the new journey. That's the new way. These are the new scrolls of understanding that's being brought forth to you as a message, messenger from the divine energy source, divine creator. creator. Now here's something else I want to read, uh, read to you at Galatians 5.1. Talking about that freedom. Talking about that Read it in, brothers and sisters. Galatians 5, 1 says, it, it is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Stand firm then, and do not let yourself be burdened again by a yoke of slavery. Yoke of slavery. Again, don't let nobody judge your spiritual walk, your connection with the divine Father. Don't let nobody judge you. It's here in the scriptures. If you want to read it in the scripture, there it is, Galatians 1 5. Say, we have the freedom not to be burdened down and yoked by mental slavery from the system and from the world and from the soul. Don't let your soul put you in slavery, put your spirit body in slavery. A lot of bodies walking around, nothing but the soul and the, and the, and the spiritual body is just trying to beg to get out. But that soul and that ego has been promoted all throughout the world. It's all about materialism, all about what you can get materially. You see, what clothes you can wear, what shoes, what entertainment for the soul. And we never sit down and think about our spirituality. We never treat our spirituality. 
spirituality as special as some treat their soul. You see? So when we reach our anointing of Christ's consciousness, we are under a new law. And that new law is the universal law of karma. And that is the law that we are judged by every day. And every positive and negative word deed we do will return into the universe. And the universe takes our word because we are no longer under the law of man, but we're under the law of the divine who would always get it right. Justice will always prevail under the universal spiritual law of karma. Or Christ made it sound even better on a level where we should understand when he said, whatever a man reap, so he shall reap. Whatever you say and do goes into the universe and it goes into the category of negativity or positivity. See, all actions it goes up into the universe that judges us. But when we are walking in the spiritual sense and we're eating of the fruitage of the spirit, blessings up just falls off on us, making us free, giving us that children of the most high type. That's wonderful. That is totally beautiful. That is totally beautiful. But Romans also talk about a time that the creation itself will be liberated from its bondage, from its decaying, and it's going to be brought to the freedom as the glory of the children of the Most High. So again, freedom, smell it. I've been walking in this freedom for so long. It's beautiful. You got to, you got to get there if you're not there. But if you're there, breathe that freedom in. Breathe that freedom in. It feels so good. First Peter, I'm going to talk about First Peter. What First Peter had to say about the freedom being in your spiritual consciousness. First Peter 2.16 says, Live as free people. Live as free people. But do not use your freedom as a cover-up for evil or be as God's slave, be as slaves as God would say. Don't fall back into our freedom and let that soul rise up higher than ourselves. We got to be consciousness to keep that soul down, to keep our freedom that we never slide back into that enslavement. Yes, we free now, but let's stay free. Let's not be free for one day. Let's walk in the freedom. Let's live in our freedom. Let's us rise into our freedom. Woo, hallelujah, hallelujah. Can you, can you work with me on that? Can you work with me on that? Now, here's another. I'm not going to tarry too long because messages is, is from the most high, the divine. Sometimes it can be 10 minutes. It can be 30 minutes. It can be an hour. It's not regulated, brothers and sisters, kings, queen of God. But I'm going to, uh, I'm coming to the end of this message of your freedom. Let's think about this. First Peter says to us, first Peter, what first Peter says, first Peter 2, 9 says, but you are chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation. This is a holy nation been built here at Peter Hope Ministry. This is a beacon for the anointed one. Those who want to go into that spiritual consciousness to reach that Christ consciousness, to walk in that freedom, to understand the new roles, new understandings are being open. We're just scratching the surface, brothers and sisters, King of God. We're just scratching the surface. Because when I open that gate, and we talk about it in Matthew 7, chapter verse 13, 14. 
I'm bringing you to the gate, because once we walk into that gate, there's no turning back. But you have to understand, you know, understand thyself, that I spirit to appreciate you, spirit to body, appreciate yourself for walking in freedom, brothers and sisters. Now, Christ, let's go back with the story of Christ. Christ walked this earth and the planet, and what did he show us? First of all, Christ never confessed to being a Roman Catholic. He never confessed of being a Methodist. He never confessed to being a Baptist. He never confessed of being a holiness. He never confessed of being a Christian. He never confessed to be Islam. He never confessed as being Judaism. He never confessed none of these titles, none of these names. But spirituality was his walk. Man gave us these names as they fractured from the truth, from the divine understanding. You see, it, it, you know, truth can be a truth to someone else. But that's why we have to build facts with truth. Truth and facts bring on, on a heavy understanding to a factual sense. But see, these factual religions had their own truth, which is no longer the truth. It's confusion, you see. So, imagine this. When you're free, smell it. When you're free, people, we we'll hear people talk about They'll talk about, and they'll argue, my God is better than your God, and my God is better than your God. My God is going to destroy your people, and my God is going to destroy you. you. They talk about their gods in these fractal religious sense that, they, that, that if you're not believing these areas of understanding, it can be a war or a distrust, a a boundary, so to speak. There's some religion that blocks you from your family if you no longer believe what they teach. There's some religion will oust you and harass you. Some religion will leave you like Jim Jones, leave you, leads you to death with the Kool-Aid. I mean, come on, brothers and sisters, kings, queens, and dogs. Look at look at the big picture. You know, we got to come to the oneness. The spirituality. This is the direction we must take in order to change the world. Take a look in the mirror. Make that change. See, people are going to be screaming and hollering about religion. Guess what we're going to be doing? They're going to be fighting over who's right. And we're going to be laying on a beach in the sunshine drinking a beverage that just part of the pleasure of being away from all of this bickering and fighting and boundaries and racial uh, profile. All of that is not us, brothers and sisters. So we're chilling and relaxing, relaxing on the beach, and we're not involved in that. We're free. Free, brothers and sisters. You gotta love it. You gotta love it. You know, it says that uh, we have no part because we are going to be the children of freedom. So like I said, it's like what are, you, what, what are we worried about? Listen, we're, we're becoming a spiritual nation. Spiritual nation, brothers and sisters. You can't get no better than that. Religion can teach to a degree, but you got to move up. If that's your desire to move and evolve higher, then you know you're on the right path. Because no one 
was here to sit here and be at a ceiling and you're not learning anything new. This whole world, every time you wake up, your spiritual nature, guess what? Tear down your system. Every person who wakes up And another of us waking up brings the new Jerusalem. Spent, talks about in scripture. Jerusalem coming down from heaven. We all want peace. We all want love. We all want joy. We all want prosperity. We hate to see the negative things that happen. The, the starving children, the, the homeless. The, those who die from sickness and those who are being murdered by crime and, and robbery, the, the, the negative energy. But most of these people, if you talk to them, they want peace. They want happiness. They want justice. They want a good quality of life. Who don't want a good quality of life? all want that. And this is why this ministry is vitally important that we walk in the spiritual walk, the spiritual light. It's vitally important. Because if we find ourselves outside of that gate going into that wide road in Matthew 7, 13 and 14, it says there's a road out there that's wide, but this gate See, that could be true. <laughs> this ministry is not on a broad, I don't, it's not like a million followers. I mean, 144,000 would assure me that we're being collected together, and that 144,000 can make a definite change. We don't need the whole world because Christ said, Many are called, but a few are chosen. But if you are here today, following this ministry, I promise you, the Divine Father, the energy brought you to the peace, brought you to the house of all. I, can, I kid you not. So with that being said, said brothers and sisters, hold tight to your freedom. Smell it. Understand you're being judged the greatest judge the set judge of the universe the universe of karma will bless you up but it also if you feed negativity it will bring you down it will pay back whatever you put out see if we do things and hurt folks like break people's hearts toy around with people's emotions steal in from your neighbor. Those things are negative energy and those things go up into that judgment and that judgment will never forget. It's going to come. So our goal is to walk in that spiritual light, eat the fruit, fruits of the spirit and never fall into that uh, debt of doing things that will make our life harder or bring upon us the yoke and slavery of this world. So with that being said, brothers and sisters, thank you for joining me at the House of Raw Ministry. I ask that you, again, stay close, stay plugged up into the ministry, and let the Divine Father show you and bless you up and see the things and all the possibilities of, of, the, of the blessings and the wisdom that you, that you uh, will uh, acquire. I'm a, I'm, a living, I'm a living testimony. I'm a living testimony, brothers and sisters. So, I, I breathe it freedom every day. Freedom from death. Freedom from fear. Knowing that we all loves us unconditionally. Did you hear what I said? He loves us unconditionally. And you will see that when we 
love and it's unconditional. Because we are children. Every one of us are children. But some of us don't recognize the true father. And they walk aimlessly with the song. So with that being said, brothers and sisters, have a good day, have a good week, have a good month, have a good year. I'll see you next time. And if you want to donate or to the ministry, uh, it will be in the uh, 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 the titles or the ending. Uh, if you want to donate, because the donation is going into a warehouse to help each other in time of need to, to promote the ministry universally. System universally, this is not about material needs or satisfaction, it's about reaching the masses of people, giving them that opportunity to be close to the divine creator, walking in his presence. With that being said, I'm done, I'm out of here. Much love, much peace. Until next time, I'll see you then. With that being said, brothers and sisters, I have to close in prayer. So let us approach the most high, the divine creator. Heavenly Father, the divine creator, the source, the energy of life, all things great. Through you, out the whole universe is all out into the vast, vast systems, the heavenly bodies. We thank you for this opportunity. Thank you for the need you the most. Help those who are lost in their way and their journey. Help draw those who are awakening to their knowing thyself. Thank you for allowing this ministry to be a beacon, to be an aid to all people of all races, to all those who are looking for better, all those who are depressed the things that they see, the high prices of food and gas, and, and this I call a cesspool. Pull, you pull them out of that cesspool and let them see the great things that you will always supply our needs that we only trust and manifest everything we need. So I pray for my sister as she is on her journey and it looked like she nearing her journey I know you will welcome her home and give her that divine assignment life is never over because you are God of the living and not of the dead so we so I ask you at this time help those who are truly seeking in this darkness to find you to bring you to the house of God to bring you to a place bring them to you but not the house of God. So we offer this prayer and thank you for all things. As we left this meeting in your care and keeping, we also ask that you keep everyone in your loving arms, in your divine arms, with your divine energy. Hold them, hug them, love them as you have done them. We thank you in your name. Till next time.